I'm a, I'm a first year PhD student, so uh, I think this uh, aspect kind of separates me from all the rest of you because uh, I'm just uh, starting with my research and I'm in really early stages with it. So, but um, yeah, uh, and considering this, uh, my presentation will mainly focus on the data that I have or I'm trying to collect at the moment and the excavations. Uh, uh, that I have produced at uh, this data. Uh, uh, as yet, I don't have any concrete uh, analysis results to present to you, but uh, because of this, I'm hoping for your uh, your comments and your recommendations on me methods and uh, readings and everything like that. So, so yeah, my, my thesis, thesis, as Russell said, is uh, focused on a really long uh, long term perspective of landscape views in the, in the area. I'm studying the uh, settlement sites, uh, burials, uh, uh, cut stones uh, from the Mesolithic till the Viking Age in a quite concentrated area. And I'm trying to look at the effects of anthropogenic and natural factors. That, uh, on the different use of landscape, so um, what kind of uh, conditions uh, uh, produce uh, settlements uh, or burials at uh, certain sites. So, but uh, considering the current presentation, I will um, uh, be looking at the central area of the study area to focus on extent and nature of early Iron Age mm -hmm. remains there and relationship between the settlements and the field remains. Uh, so, uh, a bit of a background from Estonian archaeology. Uh, considering late Bronze Age or the Iron Age, uh, uh, the, uh, the, mm, the settlements, open settlements, are thought to be single farms. Uh, very few of them have been excavated, and most of our information comes from uh, fortified settlements. That there are Four fortified, fortified settlements in the late Bronze Age and a couple of uh, hilltop settlements uh, in the pre Roman Iron Age. Uh, so, yeah, mm, well, uh, what was the biggest difference from uh, the Scandinavian material is that we don't have uh, uh, houses uh, with post, uh, post construction, but we have this cross joint uh, constructions. Uh, Triangular uh, buildings, uh, the lower uh, lower parts being uh, horizontal, and only a few post construction in the middle. <coughs> so, uh, and a bit about the ancient fields. The actual remains are um, uh, mostly evident by clearance cairns and forks in the landscape. Uh, uh, and the art marks and flowers are very seldom found. Uh, and even in the front, they're more seldom investigated. So, the early agri agriculture took place on uh, uh, really thin, resinous soils on, uh, on limestone. So, mm -hmm. they were exhausted, and there is not a lot of the soils remaining, and they have been disturbed by later activities. Uh, yeah, and this, this is the mm, one of the most famous places in Estonia are ancient fields. They are, uh, in fact, uh, right there are, uh, are the forks of, uh, of the fields. And here you can see what the art marks under, um, under a settlement layer. So, uh, uh, going on uh, to my study area, my study area is in the northern part of, the, of Estonia. Um, uh, this uh, study area is, uh, 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 I personally named it the U.S. Recovered and my Clint Bay area. It's, uh, uh, the name is my own construction. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but for today I'll be focusing on the central area where there are, at least at the moment, the most uh, most archaeological sites are yeah. So, uh, the, the area in detail. Uh, 
so this is the lower reaches of River Yagala. At this point, uh, here is the largest waterfall in Estonia, that, uh, and uh, about a kilo kilometer to the north, uh, there's the sea at modern times. Uh, during uh, during prehistory, the, the, the sea level has uh, generally uh, has has dropped, and probably during uh, the settlement phase of the hill fort up here, the uh, sea was probably just uh, uh, less than 100 meters uh, from it. Um, yeah, and uh, as, as you can see, there are several uh, different uh, uh, different uh, local sites sites in the in the area. Uh, Mostly, uh, mostly from the from the Iron Age, but uh, several from the uh, Silver Bronze days also. And um, uh, if, if I would expand the area, then there would be also several uh, burial sites and cup stones uh, in this area also. Area to the to the east uh, is uh, uh, well. There are no. No sites known for at least a couple of kilometers there. So, uh, getting a bit uh, more into detail, so the, the strike areas are the field remains. Uh, at least uh, uh, we know that uh, on the hill fort and on the east of it, uh, it's definitely field remains, but uh, there are no vestiges or anything has been done in the southern area. Um, yeah, and uh, as you can see, the, uh, there are several uh, sites uh, from the early Iron Age uh, uh, that dating their Iron Age uh, basically means early Iron Age and Middle Iron Age because the time material is so fragmented it can be uh, tested in more precisely. Um, uh, as you, as you can see, there are several settlements that are uh, kind of uh, somewhat contemporary with the field remains. So, uh, getting to field work uh, on the hill fort, there are, as a result of uh, several years of field work that actually started already in the 1920s, uh, the construction of a dam, uh, there are multiple phases uh, on, the, on the hill fort. There's, uh, Conver settlement, but we also think that there, there might have been a Mesolithic settlement on there. At that time, the hill fort was, a, was an island in the middle of the sea. Uh, a Bronze Age fortified settlement, which was uh, discovered during the 2009 excavations, and uh, the Bronze layer has not been recognized in any, any other excavations. And then um, there's the pre Roman Iron Age, the Roman Iron Age hill fort. Hill fort uh, uh, is, uh, and uh, the wall of the hill fort uh, has been uh, excavated several times uh, in, the, in the northern area, most recently in 2005, 2007. And th then there are three Roman Iron Age or Roman Iron Age fields, uh, probably covering well, most of the most of the hill fort. So. Uh, uh, this is the excavation site of 2009. Uh, here on the drawing, you can see under the, the blackish uh, pre Roman Iron Age layer, there we discovered uh, several art marks, and uh, the art marks are plowed into the bronze, uh, bronze Age layer. Uh, pre Roman Iron Age, the uh, uh, Iron Age house that is somewhat seen here. One of the walls was burnt and uh, a bit vis visible in the area, and uh, several uh, fireplaces in the vicinity also. <coughs> uh, and uh, another excavation in 2013 in the, in the area, uh, we also discovered. Uh, Art marks uh, and uh, under the pre-Roman Iron Age layer, 
but no composite la layer was uh, discovered there. Um, and uh, from that, we think that uh, the plow, plow uh, that the, the whole top of the heat port was plowed um, by during the pre-roll iron ages. And it's uh, interesting because uh, going back to the 2009 excavation, it seems that the plowing started um, uh, not much time had passed when the when the house was uh, abandoned or demolished or burnt, uh, and when the fire was started on the hill port. And we think that the plowing is actually contempor contemporary with the uh, fortifications built uh, in the northern part. So, uh, take a look at, at the eastern part of the uh, of the study area, we had uh, development-led excava uh, excavations in 2011. Uh, actually, what we've seen from but in this area, we can see uh, sort of yellow in there. Uh, uh, at first, we discovered uh, field, field remains uh, uh, very similar to the ones on, on the report. And, um, uh, later, a uh, Cornwall settlement site uh, was discovered under the field, field remains. Um, and uh, we also did some uh, geophysics in the area, as you can see, uh, marked with the red li lines in the, in the area, and uh, uh, got some test heads uh, to confirm the pro profiles uh, of the contact with the radar. So, yeah, and here you can see also a couple of uh, uh, art marks uh, in the 2011 uh, ex excavations. Uh, and uh, here the art marks are visible very sporadically. It doesn't, doesn't show as well on the screen, but you can see here and here. And uh, using the uh, yeah, and look, looking at the profile of the 2011 excavation, you can see that uh, this red layer here is a comb uh, combware house, uh, and right on top of that there's an aeolian sand, and top of that the layer of uh, the field the field layer, and on top of that. Uh, about 20 centimeters of sand, and again, a uh, field layer, and then on top of it, again, 20 centimeters of sand, and again, a field. Uh, uh, the, the center field layer is uh, uh, just debated is it a uh, field actually, or is it just uh, a turf layer that uh, uh, grew there between, uh, between the at a time when aeolian sand was uh, was moved there, and the latest field layer is uh, we've seen quite a few tops here. Uh, is uh, dated uh, roughly to the seventh uh, the ninth century. Yeah. Uh, a few thoughts on the met methods used in the area. So. Basically, there have been archaeological excavations uh, done in there for more than 10 years, uh, but uh, with the acceptance of the 2011 excavations, so all of them were small trenches and uh, a couple of test pits. Uh, GPR has been used in the Hillport and the field remains, uh, but, uh, but it has not been used to compile a total picture of, of the actual layers in the area. Uh, but, um, more uh, as a general survey tool. So we also, uh, or the soil samples were also collected for archaeological analysis. Uh, these have been at this point an analyzed by uh, Sander um, Yeah, mm, he, got, he got some uh, great results from them, but it's clear that the more is needed from here context with most uh, 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 samples I gave him actually came from the flowering layers, and uh, it's 
quite uh, difficult actually to connect uh, the, the things that the sender found to the uh, to a specific uh, feature or to even to a specific uh, uh, period in the in the settlement. Uh, also, post uh, post analysis uh, uh, samples were collected that uh, have not been analyzed, analyzed at them, but uh, something has been very irregular, and uh, I'm quite skeptical at what uh, what we can actually find find from the there. So, uh, reading Radoslav text that that he sent us, uh, yeah, nothing like like uh, he presented there uh, cannot be done at this. Uh, at this site in, at the moment. Uh, there have also been uh, pollen analysis uh, sent to some of the specialists in Russia, but they haven't been analyzed uh, yet also. So uh, a couple of preliminary results. Um, uh, as was uh, confirmed with the GPR studies, the whole area is covered with aeolian sands. Uh, the sand may be up to 150 centimeters high or deep, and um, we, we think that it may be partly due to the farming. If uh, the farming areas were quite quite so big as we uh, saw on the map earlier, that um, uh, cutting of all, all the trees in the area uh, might have resulted in uh, stronger wind, uh, stronger winds, and more uh, sand being moved in the area. So. Uh, there might be a micro scale uh, natural catastrophe going, going on in the pre Roman areas in the site. Um, there are se several uh, somewhat contemporary settlement, settlements and field, field remains, but their um, uh, connection uh, uh, is uh, not clear at the moment, but uh, maybe with an ex acceptance of the uh, Pre Roman Iron Age house on the hill fort and the field that was plowed uh, right after. Uh, yeah, the Java plant remains from the layer mostly are edible berries. There are also some barley and na naked barley there, but uh, as I said before, there, there are no uh, very clear concept, context for, for the samples. Uh, yeah, and as I said, farm cells. So, uh, what, uh, I thought uh, I'd add a slide, why, why is this uh, site kind of an, uh, yeah, of importance? Uh, uh, yeah, this is the uh, only, only place in Estonia or in the politics, actually, the Lithuanians can uh, have some comments on that. Uh, and field grains with art marks and undisturbed flowers uh, have been uh, investigated in some extent. Uh, it was uh, featured in the coastal zone uh, uh, for the la last several decades. It's been an understanding that the coastal zones uh, during the Iron Age were not uh, permanently settled at all. Um, and the, the fields there are, as you, as you saw on the photos, there are uh, positioned on sandy soils, uh, which uh, were recently, or by, by some uh, geologists and geographers, uh, Still, thought to be unsuitable for early farming, uh, but there are uh, very similar sites uh, in Finland, uh, especially Oriyärvi, which, uh, from a couple of photos, you can think that uh, Oriyärvi is Jagalan. They're so similar, uh, and uh, also uh, from Kapland, there, there are uh, fields on the coastal areas on, uh, on sandy soils that have been. Um, that have been uh, plowed since the uh, pre Roman Iron Age. So, um, what are my future pl plans? Uh, first of all, I uh, need to sort out all of the data, data as, uh, since you're between different researchers and so it has not been anal analyzed properly after the excavation. Uh, yeah, serve, serve it in the wider area because um, due to the development led uh, field work in 2011, most of the sites uh, are only on the one, one bank, so on the right bank of the river. Uh, yeah, 
and uh, I'm also planning on uh, small trial excavations on the settlement sites uh, around the fields to get uh, a bit more precise uh, dates than just the Iron Age. Um, yeah, and uh, as a result, well, I would like to end up is to oh, get the data in a, in a format that I could start uh, combining the analysis of the fine material, particulate reader, and particulate in uh, some kind of a reliable way. So, ah, yeah, okay, that's all for me.